So I'm actually getting ready to go and see Ready Player One here in the next hour or so. I actually had no real intentions of even going. I uh, I read the book last year and I did not like it. I didn't enjoy it. I thought it was just a giant list. I thought, you know, the character, the main character seemed too, too confident, like overly confident. So um, sure of himself and everything he was doing that uh he just seemed he came off arrogant and it wasn't enjoyable it's not really fun to to have your main character be so capable like he had this huge opposition and every single thing that came at him he just took care of it like the there was no uh tension there was no drama to the story it was just like oh no one's done this thing for a long time oh this guy did this thing now everyone else did this thing, and here's a list of things that happened in the 90s, or the 80s, sorry. But anyways, I didn't really have any intention. Uh, some friends invited me to go with them tonight, so I figured ah, I might as well check it out. Uh, so I'm going to go, I'm going to see it, and I will come back and share my thoughts. So I just got home after seeing the movie, and I thought it was fine. I, I don't know, it wasn't great. It was kind of what I expected, this big CGI spectacle. Um, I actually really enjoyed the in real life stuff uh, much more than I did in the game in the Oasis. Uh, I thought that was done better. I felt like there was more tension and more stakes, I guess, to what was happening. Um, but other than that, you know, the the movie was fine. the the final The final fight um, in the Oasis I thought was pretty good. If you've read the book, you know the basic story that. Um, the creator of the Oasis, which is this giant VR world that people go and essentially just live there. They spend their whole life there. That's where they earn their money. Everything they do is, for the most part, in there. They take breaks for sleeping and eating and going to the bathroom, at least according to the movie. And there is a mission from the guy who created the Oasis. After he he died, he set up an Easter egg, a, a thing to... Sorry, there's a party going on next door i don't know if you can hear it but he uh he put an easter egg in the game and the first person to find it gains control over the entire entire oasis that's the whole premise is people are trying to beat these challenges or find these keys to win the easter egg my biggest frustration is probably the way they understand video games I don't know if you've ever watched something like uh, Games Done Quick or just speed running in general, but people will spend so much time trying to break a game and figure out the way it works, and they can input code with the character on screen to manipulate the game. So they can rewrite the code to change the game, to add elements, to take elements away, to move you to different levels. Like, it is insane what they're able to do just by using the controller without having to like hack into the game like physically and not have to change anything permanently. It's amazing what they can do. And they figured it out by just trying everything, just constantly trying everything and going back and forth and trying to figure out what they can do, what doesn't work, what, you know, all this stuff. Now imagine $500 billion attached to breaking a video game. There would be so many people having had figured out all the clues all the steps because it's the the movie puts forward like oh if you know halliday's heart then that's what is going to lead you through these steps and i just i I don't really buy it i don't buy that people wouldn't have figured out these clues especially the very first one in the race scene where the clue was drive backwards and a secret door will open up for you. A hundred percent in five years, where everyone knows this is the first place to start, somebody would have tried that. There's no doubt in my mind, someone would have tried it by accident without even finding the clue in the video. They would have figured that out. So stuff like that, it was just kind of annoying. One of the big things about this movie and the book is all the references to classics you know, in the 90s and the 80s and just kind of throughout time, 
they're showing these things like, oh, you, if you like this, then you'll recognize it and type of things. And I, I didn't really enjoy that. I didn't find that entertaining that much. It was kind of more distracting than exciting until the one time that I actually appreciated it was when the Iron Giant fell into the lava towards the end and he did the thumbs up from Terminator, uh, the second Terminator. And I, that felt special to me. So for everything I just said, I think maybe it's me being, I don't know, a jerk or just kind of uh, grumpy. Like, I get it. I understand if there's something else like the T-Rex or King Kong or the Iron Giant or whatever, Halo characters, Minecraft, whatever it is, I'm sure that there's something that is going to connect with someone and that there's something in this movie that will probably connect with everyone a similar way that that thumbs up from the Terminator movie felt special to me. So I don't, I don't think it's necessarily bad. I don't think it's uh, like a negative towards the movie. I just, I didn't enjoy most of it. Most of it was more distracting than enjoyable. So Ty Sheridan was Parzival, who's the main character. And I thought he did great. Uh, drove me crazy trying to figure out who he was or how I where I knew him from because he sort of looks like Miles Teller but maybe like Miles Teller's cousin uh, but he's Cyclops in the newer uh, X-Men movies but I felt like everyone else was pretty weak um, they they did not feel like real people they did not feel like they had any depth they felt very much just that character like this stereotypical tropey character per whoever they were supposed to be. They, they didn't feel like there was much to them. Even Artemis, the the love interest, which I feel like this movie was really distracted by the love story element of it. It felt very unnatural and very fast. He's telling her he loves her halfway into the movie, but they've only been around each other for, I don't even know. They've, they've been around each other three times, I think, at that point. Like, Hardly at all. Um, but other than that, the the acting was fine. You know, it was, it was believable enough for the story they were telling. The characters, on the other hand, are super obnoxious. They're so pretentious, so arrogant about their knowledge of Halliday, the creator, that it's just exhausting. And there's this one point where uh, Artemis is challenging uh, Parzival on his knowledge and they're going back and forth, back and forth about everything they know. And it's just like the worst kind of people, like the people you don't want to hang out with. The, well, actually type of people. I don't know if you know what I mean, but the people who will correct you if you accidentally say the wrong thing or you're mistaken, they they jump on the chance to, to tell you you're wrong and how they know more than you. It, it was exhausting. And like I was saying, I, I, I enjoyed the in real life stuff for the most part, uh, about three quarters of the way through, that stopped. As soon as they became superheroes in real life, additionally to being in the video game, in the video game, I, I didn't care. I assumed you could do whatever you wanted. Like there was, there didn't seem to be any boundaries on the things that you could do. Like you had magic and, you know, different things. Guns could just, you could pull out of your inventory at any time. Like that, I got it. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But in real life, when they're in the car fighting the girl, I think her name was Finale. Was that is that is that a thing? Let me I'm gonna double check that real quick. So it's F apostrophe N A L E. Finale. I'm pretty sure that he calls her Finale, but she's kind of the last person they have to fight to overcome the last obstacle. So I thought that was dumb, but they fight her in the bus or the, the van and they're just all martial arts experts. She jumps out of a car onto the back of a truck onto the back of the van shoots. The lock off comes in, gets in a big fist fight with these people takes on three of them until the 11 year old hits her with a fire extinguisher. And then Parzival runs around. I know he's on wires, but he runs around the truck, kicks her in the face, and she falls out of the truck. It just all felt so unbelievable. Like, it was just, 
I don't know. I, I there are so many things in this movie that just made it really hard for me to invest uh caring about it into. You know, there's so many things that just kept taking me out and like this dumb. Why would that happen or why would this happen? Like all this stuff like it, I don't know the the whole idea that if you die in the world in the oasis you zero out everything you have is taken away from you but you can buy real world things with the money so like essentially I think you could just if you make a bunch of money in the game buy a bunch of real world stuff then sell it for money later like that could kind of be a bank or why not have a banking system to where you can protect your stuff I don't know it's it's it's, just, it's dumb. It's a dumb complaint on my part, but it's just one of those things that kind of bothered me. And uh, probably the thing that people will enjoy the most is the visuals. And I thought they were good. I think it's definitely meant for something like IMAX. I saw it. So I live in Thailand. I think most of the people who follow the podcast know that already. So I'm in a pretty small town. Uh, the movie theater that I went to has four screens and nothing close to IMAX. Um, and so it, I think that kind of hurt the experience because especially that opening shot where you're traveling through the Oasis and the camera is spinning and flipping and you're seeing all this stuff. I can imagine that on IMAX and being impressive, but I could also imagine it being really nauseating. Even watching it just on a normal screen, I kind of felt dizzy and like, just like not enjoying that. Like I kind of wanted to look away just because the perspective of where you were going kept getting lost because you would be like ground would be underneath you at one point and then you would change to another place and you'd be upside down and then you'd be sideways. And it was just like a hard thing to keep your mind, um, keeping track of where you were in the space. Overall, it's fine. It's it's not great in my opinion. I think a lot of people will love it. It's not terrible. It's better than I expected and it's better than the book. Uh, so if you love the book, you'll probably really like the movie. Or maybe you'll hate the movie because it's not like the book at all. I don't know. In my opinion, much better than the book. Not great as a movie, but it's fine to to watch. I doubt I will ever see it again. I don't really, I don't see the point the story there's it doesn't really follow the hero's path or the hero's journey right like you think about uh let's say frodo who's like unequipped kind of frail scared trying to figure it out and progresses and gets better and more confident and then has that confidence taken away and you know it keeps getting built back up and keeps getting his hope stashed and like you really feel like oh this this guy is not capable of doing this thing he's not he's he seems like a bad choice to do this but it's been thrust upon him you never feel that way with parzival you feel like oh he's obviously the one who's supposed to do it because he's perfect at everything he does and anytime there's a um, an issue that comes up that an obstacle they don't really show a lot of overcoming the obstacle they just kind of jump to the obstacle being overcome. They seem to kind of skip the struggle in which the movie is really long. So I kind of appreciate that, but also I don't because it is a really poor way to tell a story. But I don't know. I'm not Steven Spielberg. He's probably smarter than I am. I just didn't really enjoy the movie. So I'm not going to give it a number scale. To me, not wanting to rewatch it is a good enough system. <laughs> I'll probably never see it again. I'm not mad that I saw it now, but that's about it.